to give you a slightly different perspective when it comes to what it is to be a global citizen, we have created the Young Global Citizen Award. Our first recipient is the pianist Llewellyn Sanchez Warner, who is 17. This is a reminder to us all that the attributes of a global citizen are present even from an early age. Llewellyn began studying piano at two. He became a full-time student at Ventura College at five, where he became the youngest person to earn an associate degree. At six, he made his orchestral debut. He made Juilliard history at age 14 as the youngest college student. Anyone with so many musical gifts would be remarkable enough. But what sets Llewellyn apart and what makes him a young global citizen is his commitment to social action through music. He was recognized by CNN International for his humanitarian contributions. He performed for President Obama's inaugural concert. At age six, 13, he was the first American soloist to perform with the Iraqi National Symphony in Baghdad, where he also launched a fundraising drive to create the country's first children's cancer clinic. He is a remarkable talent. In a short time, he has made an indelible impression on the arts and has used his talents to bring people together and improve the human condition. That is the definition of a global citizen. And so with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce the recipient of the Atlantic Council's inaugural Long Young Global Citizen Award, Llewellyn Sanchez Warner. Good evening. Thank you, Adrienne, for your extremely kind words. I hope you know just how much you are admired and cherished. As everyone here knows, your wit, wisdom, and charm make you a joy to be around. The lives your vast generosity and vision have transformed extend beyond many borders, and your efforts will continue to bear fruit for generations to come. Thank you, Adrienne. During World War II, Winston Churchill was asked if he should cut arts funding in favor of funding the war effort against Germany. Churchill resoundingly responded, well, then what are we fighting for? Allow me to share a few brief examples. Many of you are no doubt familiar with Daniel Barenboim's work with the West Eastern Devon Orchestra. As a project against ignorance and intolerance, Barenboim co-founded the youth orchestra with Edward Said to provide a forum for Middle Eastern youth, both Jewish and Arab, to collaborate. In Finland, John Sibelius composed the symphonic poem Finlandia as his contribution to the press celebrations in 1899, a covert protest opposing increasing censorship from the Russian Empire. The composition helped rouse and unify an entire nation, later becoming a national anthem. In Poland, Frederick Chopin, too frail to fight in Poland's 1831 November uprising, against Russia, made his contribution to the Polish effort with a short but heroic work for piano, the revolutionary etude. In Mexico, Carlos Chavez's influence on Mexico's modern musical culture and education was mammoth. His founding of the current version of the National Symphony Orchestra, just the tip of the iceberg. But Chavez was also a trailblazer in his compositional style, infusing an unmistakably Mexican identity in his works by researching the foundational rhythmic and modal mechanics of both Mexican and Aztec folk music. 
now, just as would happen when reading the novels of Carlos Fuentes or appreciating the paintings of Diego Rivera, anyone around the world hearing a Chavez composition immediately becomes immersed in the complexity and richness of Mexican culture. What better ambassador can a nation have? Rounding back to the United States, some of you will know of the Cafe Society in Greenwich Village, founded by Barney Josephson in 1938. While just up down in Harlem's Cotton Club, black musicians were forced to enter through the service entrance, even if they were performing. The Cafe Society provided a forum that freely encouraged regular racially integrated collaboration. And it was under that roof that Billie Holiday first sang Strange Fruit, a poignant piece about lynching in the South. Lastly, for the time I have now anyway, the incomparable, and I mean incomparable, Leonard Bernstein. As an educator, he led the New York Philharmonic for 53 young people's concerts to introduce an entire generation of youngsters to the joys of classical music with inviting warmth. As an activist, Bernstein performed Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which incorporates Schiller's text of universal brotherhood and love on, in both West and Eastern Berlin to celebrate the fall of the Berlin Wall. These are just a few of the many examples that emboldened me to harness the power of music as an instrument of peace and diplomacy. I am as passionate about artistic social responsibility as I am about the wondrousness of music itself. I am deeply, deeply honored and profoundly appreciative of being given this award. However, it pains me to tell you that music and other art forms we so love are often thought of as luxuries we cannot afford. This really could not be further from the truth. Now, everyone in this room has tremendous influence in your own sphere of endeavor. My humble request is that you continue your steadfast support and advocacy for the arts. With the deepest gratitude, thank you all. And now I will perform Ravel's Alborada del Gracioso. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> 